Hello and welcome back to FEM Expert. After a long time of inactivity, we're getting back into creating ANSYS APDL tutorials. As you might see, there's been a lot of changes in FEM Expert. We also have a lot more experience and we hope you're going to enjoy these new tutorials. Today, we're going to continue with our medium tutorial series in which we're going to show you how to simulate elastic elements in ANSYS APDL. I'm going to get to the ANSYS program and before we start perform doing a model, we're going to talk a little bit about these elastic elements. In ANSYS, they're called combin from the word combination due to the combination of a spring damper. They simulate the combination between a spring and a damper, as you can see in this figure. The spring is defined by its uh, const elastic constant k and the damper is defined by its, uh, its uh, damping coefficient cv. These elements can act, uh, they can be linear in any of the main directions and they can also be torsional in any of the main directions. These elements are very important for simulations, although they are not utilized to obtain stresses at their level. They're basically utilized to simulate behaviors or to simplify models. We're going to show you more, some more tutorials and examples of more complex simulations and and we're going to talk about them in more detail in those examples. But today we're just going to do an introduction on them and we're going to perform a simple example so you can understand how do they act and how do you how to use them. We're going to look here uh, here on the help. You can look uh, at the ANSYS help more in detail. We're going to see on the output values, the combination output uh, elements, uh, you would not find any stress or str strain values. Basically, these elements only will allow you to get some displacement information, some forces, some stretch uh, twists, which are related to the displacement. So, as I was saying, they are utilized to simulate behaviors, but they cannot be utilized to dimension stuff right away. So, we're going to get into ANSYS again. And the problem for today is going to be the simulation of a suspended mass having 25 kilograms being suspended by a spring with a k constant of 25,000 newton divided by meters. The length of this spring for this simulation is not really relevant, but we're going to select it equal to 0 0.250 meters, meaning 250 millimeters but we're working on the international system of units, so all the distances have to be in under meters. Performing a little bit of calculation on the right, for the 25 kilograms we would have, with the gravitational acceleration, we would have a, a force of 245.25 newtons. Uh, this force would try to compress the spring, and the spring will comp try to compensate that force with an elastic force that will determine an, a compression on him. Uh, from the equation, we have the electric force is equal to the elastic constant multiplied by the displacement or the compression of the spring in this case. Therefore, the compression or the displacement on the spring would be equal to the force divided by the constant, which will give us a 9.81 millimeters of displacement. So I'm going to start in ANSYS. We're going to work in this example with uh, nodes and um, elements in order to make it easier. In the next uh, tutorial, in the next tutorial, we're going to work with key points and lines and geometry, basically. So the first step we're gonna we're gonna go to ANSYS element type add a delete we're gonna add a structural mass 31 there's a tutorial if you don't if you haven't seen how to use mass elements there are, so there is a tutorial that explains how to use the mass elements now we're gonna add a combination we're gonna go down and we'll look at the combination there's a couple of different combination elements spring damper elements we're gonna do it with the spring damper 14, we're going to hit OK, we're going to go to Combine 14, we're going to choose options and we're going to select the linear solution, which is the one by default. We're going to choose, this, as we said, as I said, uh, this element can act as displacement as a linear spring and it can act as a torsional spring. We're going to select linear spring, we're going to do UZ, degree of freedom, and we're going to select 3D longitudinal on the degree of freedom selected. We're going to hit OK, we're going to close. Once we have the element time defined, we're going to go and define the constant. We're going to go to add a delete, add 
for the mass 21, we're going to have 25 kilograms for the X, Y, Z directions. We're going to have hit OK. And we're going to add for the combin 14, we're going to define a 25,000 Newton meter divided by meter elastic constant. The damping coefficient is going to be zero and all of the other information is going to be zero. So we're just going to have a spring. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit close. So since we're going to model this, we're going to do it from the command lines. And we're going to do, do it by working with nodes. We're going to do N for the node 1. It's going to be on the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. And then the node number 2 is going to be on the 0, 0, 0 to 50 coordinate. Once they are created, we can twist the, the model and we'll see that we have the two nodes. The first node will be not that visible because it's underneath the triad, uh, the origins, but it doesn't matter, it's there. So now we want to create a mass element and in node two, and we, we have the properties, the element type and the real constants we haven't defined. So we're gonna, we have here the material one, the type one, real one so we're gonna actually go to e comma p from pick e is the command for element we're gonna go and hit ok we're gonna select number two and by doing so we just select that uh, we just created an element having these properties we can do an e list and we see we create an element having the properties that were defined on this bar down here being an element of type one is element one, type one, material one, section one. The material, since we are not utilizing it, it doesn't matter, some of these, uh, any of these values are not defined or that the element doesn't require, they will be ignored, although they are assigned to the element. Okay, so at this point, we have the, the mass element. We need to create the uh, spring element. In order to do that, we're gonna do we're going to have to change the type. So we have to type type comma two. And you'll see that down here, we get the type of the, of, the, of the global type or the type of anything that will be created is set to two. And we have to change the real value. So real comma two. So now anything that we created, any element that we created is going to be material one type two, real two, section number two, one. So we're going to go and do E comma P. I'm going to create this element between these two nodes. And as you can see, we have two elements. One is the uh, spring element. The other one is the, the mass element. In order to I'm going to go back to the model, the embedment is at the bottom. In order to determine or put that embedment, which is the zero displacement and rotation condition, we're going to go and do, do the D command comma P going to be on a node, we're going to choose the node, we're going to be all degrees of freedom, we're going to set it to zero. As you can see, that will be the, we will have the final model. We can try to do the E shape one comma one, we can or use this command. And when we move the model, we're going to see that we have a spring icon and a mass icon, a spring with K zero and a mass with mass zero. Uh, this is a, a way the E shape allows you to visualize things in a more realistic way, but it's not really good to evaluate the results of this type of element. So we're going to do a scale one and key zero to go back to the regular, sorry, zero, zero to go back to the regular visualization. So once we have this model, we have to introduce the gravitational acceleration. So we're going to do ACEL comma zero, zero, 9.81. This is an inertial acceleration, so if we want it to act down, we have to introduce it going up. And once we have that, we go to solution and we hit solve. It's gonna give us a warning. We hit okay, and then the solution is done. The warning, you can ignore it. It's a warning about the spring element. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a big deal. So once we have the results, we can go to post one and type PNL sol u sum, which is plot nodal solutions, the displacement summation. 
and as we can see we have 0 0.00981 which is exactly what we obtained in our calculations being equal to 9.81 millimeters. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoy this tutorial.